Hi everybody, this is Jen from Cookies, Cupcakes, and Cardio.com. Today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. We're going to be making a meatloaf cake. Now this meatloaf cake is covered in mashed potato icing and it's topped with bacon roses. My dad is not such a fan of sweet things, so I thought this meatloaf cake would be perfect for upcoming birthdays and of course Father's Day. Let's get started on this new tutorial. To make the meatloaf, we're going to be using one egg. We're going to be using eight soda crackers. These ones are the whole wheat version, but you could use the regular ones if you prefer. We're going to need a half cup of milk. I'm using 2%, but you could use 1% or skim as well. We're going to need one kilogram of lean ground beef, one medium onion chopped, and that's what we need for the meatloaf. Now to decorate the meatloaf, we're going to be using these mashed potatoes as our icing. And to make the bacon roses, all we need is bacon. So what we're going to do first is put the meatloaf together. Now the recipe that I've got in front of you is for one half of the cake. So this is going to be one layer. You're going to need to double these exact recipes that you see in order to make the second layer as well. So I've got my meat here in my bowl and now I'm going to put in my onions into here and just get them all out and my egg and I've just beaded it just a little bit gently just to kind of mix the yolk around and we're going to add in the milk and with the crackers I'm just going to crush them and just get them into smaller pieces and get them mixed in here as well and then I'm just going to dig in and start mixing and combining once the meat mixture is all mixed in together, I have an eight inch pan which has been greased and I'm going to put all of this meat into the pan. Now this is just a regular cake pan and we're going to bake the meatloaf at 350 degrees for about 45 to 60 minutes. You wanna make sure that all of the center all the way through is cooked and that there's no red meat remaining. So I'm just pressing it down here. And again, you'll need to make two of these layers and we're just going to pop this into the oven and then move on to the bacon roses. With my meatloaf layers baking, I'm going to get started on the bacon roses. So I've got my bacon here and I'm just going to do it piece by piece and I'm just rolling up the bacon and I'm just going to, you want to roll it like fairly tight. If you're familiar with making ribbon roses, it's kind of similar to that same effect, except we're using meat and this lovely bacon. So there's one, you can leave the mini like that, just one piece of bacon, but I really like when you do a second one, it just gives it a little bit more of a, I don't know, a real rose shape here. Give it a little bit more dimension. So I'm just going around like this. Now these are going to bake in the oven and this oven needs to be at 425 and it's going to bake for about 20 to 25 minutes. So when you get it rolled like that, you're going to take a toothpick and you're just going to put it in through the side. That's just going to hold that together. Pop it into a muffin tin and they're good to bake. With the two meatloaf layers baked, we are ready to cover it in our mashed potato icing. So I've got some mashed potatoes here on top of the first layer, and I'm just going to use my hands, and I've got gloves on just because it just makes it easier for cleanup. And I'm just gently pressing the mashed potatoes towards the edges. So this is like the middle layer that you would find in a regular cake. So when you cut into it, you'll be able to see this layer. And then I'm gonna put my second layer on top here. And then just like I would a regular cake, I'm gonna cover the entire thing in the rest of these potatoes. So I've covered the cake in the mashed potatoes and I have the extra put into a piping bag and it's fitted with an 827 open star tip and that's an Ateco one. And I'm just going to apply some mashed potato flowers to the top of the cake. Can't say I've ever said that before. With the cake covered in the mashed potatoes, we're going to put on our bacon roses that have cooled completely now. So I'm just going to put a couple of them up over here on this side. And these are the double ones. And then a third double one in there. And then I did do a couple of single ones as well. So I'm gonna pop those ones kind of down towards that side. And then one more with the, I'm taking the toothpicks out. And then one more up over here. Now you always have to have your veggies with it too. So I'm gonna show you how to do some veggie garnishes now. 
So we're going to start out making a tomato rose and I'm using a really sharp peeler and I'm just going to use the peeler to dig into the top of the tomato skin and I'm just going to move it around the tomato and I'm just trying to get as long of a peel as I can. If it breaks off early it's no big deal you just want to keep going around until you can get back to where you started. And so there we go. I'm just gonna put that to the side and my tomato down. Now I'm going to take my tomato peel and I'm going to roll it up like I did with the bacon. So I'm just kind of pinching it together at the bottom here and rolling it up. It's really slippery, but when we put it into the mashed potatoes, it will stay in place. So we've got it rolled like that. On to the carrot. So I'm using my peeler again and I've got the outer skin of the carrot peeled off already and I'm going to try to get a flat portion of the carrot. So I'm just going to do a couple of pre-peels here. So now it's going to be nice and flat and it's going to be a little bit wider too at this point. So we have got the carrot peeled like this and then I'm just going to do the exact same thing, roll it up. Now the carrot won't go as tight because it's just a little bit harder to roll and if you try to go too tight it breaks but again it's not a big deal. Just some making some fun, having some fun with food. So we've got it like that and then once we go to put it onto the top of the cake I'm going to put it inside the tomato. Next up, we're working with the green onion. So I'm going to cut off probably about an inch of the top here. And then what I'm going to do with my scissors is just slip my tip into there. And I'm just going to make really small cuts like this all the way around, opening it up here. And it's gonna to start to fan out. And I'm going to put this green onion segment into the center of the tomato and carrot flour that I have sitting over here. So I'm just gonna put that into the center and that just gives it a little pop of color. What I'm also going to do with the green onion is just cut some small, thin little pieces like that and I'm gonna use those for additional garnish around the cake. So I've got the flowers on the top here and I've added a little couple of extra little green pieces. And at the bottom of the cake, I've gone around and put the flower border as well. Now I've got in my piping bag some ketchup fitted with a small round tip and I'm just going to pipe dad. Now ketchup is like super runny, so you do not need to squeeze your tip hardly at all. So I'm just being very gentle with this. And when I've got this piped, I'm going to also add a little bit of this color from the ketchup around the outside of the border here. I'm just going to put them here in the center of the little star flowers here and just go around like this and just alternating every second one because in between each of those ones, I'm going to pop just a little green onion little piece and pop it in there and just tap it down. So I'm going to finish this off and I've got a second one on the go and I will show you what it looks like when you cut it open. So there you go everybody, how to make a meatloaf cake with bacon roses on top. This is the perfect cake for my father and I can't wait to show him it. Thanks for watching everybody, remember to subscribe to the channel and you can find this cake in our food imposter playlist and lots of many other ideas. See you next time.